Hi, good morning everyone. I'm Pam Fox at pamfox.org and at Quasi Yoga with Pam Fox here on Facebook. I'm an integrative nutrition health coach helping people heal in effective and natural ways. So, um, good morning everyone. I'm back again today uh, live on Facebook and um, I'm going to be doing kind of a, a build up on yesterday's video. Um, the question for today is, have you ever asked yourself, or have you ever thought to yourself, I really need a massage? <laughs> so um, I know personally, like I've been on the massage table and thought to myself, I need to schedule this for myself every single month. This feels amazing. I know this is so beneficial. I really need to do this. Um, but then I don't, but then I don't schedule that massage. I've maybe had five massages in my whole life, so I don't have them every month. Um, but in today's video, I want to share three exercises that you can do right now that will mimic a neck and shoulder massage. Real simple stuff, probably nothing new that you've never seen before, but I'm gonna build upon what we did yesterday. I'm, I'm gonna start by summarizing the three exercises that I did yesterday and talking a little bit more about the nervous system. So again, I broke down the nervous system yesterday into the two components, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. And the goal is for us to be in that parasympathetic nervous system more often than we are because it's when we upregulate that system that our body is more effectively able to rest and digest and that's when our immune function is at its optimal. So that's what we want. We want in, in order to be healthy and to have strong immune support, we want to have those signals being sent in the body that are saying all is well instead of, you know, there's an emergent um, situation going on. So um, one of the ways we can do that is by relaxing our muscles and slowing the breath. And we can do that anytime. We have control over that, don't we? And so um, yesterday I talked about the three exercises that you can do that, in, that involve the back. And so the reason I started with the back is because we have a large system of muscles in the back and it's a large space and we tend to carry a lot of stress in our backs. And so just a quick summary before I move on to today's three exercises, I'm gonna go over yesterday's three exercises. We talked about lumbar rotation, which is twisting, lumbar extension and flexion, which is think of a back bend and a toe touch, and then lateral flexion, which is side to side. And so it's just that simple. I just did the three exercises. So um, a little bit better put though would be to, you know, at your chair, you can do these at your chair. You just twist and you grab, you know, the chair and you look over your shoulder and you hold that. But the key is to relax and breathe. And you wanna do both sides and that's gonna start warming up and stretching out your back. Same thing coming into, I'm gonna to turn to the side, coming into a back bend and lifting the chin, or excuse me, a rounded back and lowering the head down. Relax your head and round your back. That's gonna put your back into that curved position and stretch that spine. And then you come into the arched back and you pull your shoulder blades together squeezing and it's so important that when we do these exercises and this is really important guys we do we, we always do two things when we do any exercise we do a flexion and we do an extension and the reason that's so important anytime we flex our muscle we squeeze our muscle and those fibers of the muscles are um, they're elastic they're elastic and so if you think of a rubber band if it's old and cold and you pull it it could snap but if it's you know warm and pliable, you can stretch it all day. And so that's what we want with muscles. We want warm, pliable muscles that we can become more flexible. And so when you squeeze a muscle, it heats up and becomes more flexible and pliable. So then when you flex, when you flex it, you squeeze, and then when you extend it, you can stretch it better. And that's what we want. We want to become more flexible, right? So in the case, you know, here we round and stretch, and then we squeeze and heat. Squeezing, you know, squeezing those shoulder blades together, the muscles squeeze, they, they come together with the bones, kind of massage each other, the tension is released, the muscles heat up, and then they're more, better prepared for that stretch. Okay, so that's where we gain flexibility. Um, and then the third exercise is the lateral flexion side to side, where again, one hand is up, the other hand is down, and then we just lean to the side and hold that for about 10 seconds and breathe. I talked a lot about that in yesterday's video, the importance of um, slowing the breath, 
taking deep breaths and really engaging with what's happening with your body and relaxing those muscles. And so really quick, let's talk about that, engaging and, and um, really being present and aware of what's going on in your body. You probably have heard that before in terms of yoga, you know, it's really helped me to become more in tune with my body. Well, what does that mean? Well, really what it means is um, in a yoga practice, there's a lot of encouragement for you to pay attention to what's happening in your body as you're doing the exercise. So instead of, you know, you know, your mind being over here and your body being over here, they're intertwined and we're very present. And so, for example, if I'm doing a stretch like this and I'm squeezing my shoulder blades together, I'm paying attention to the sensations that I'm experiencing. So if you do this with me right now and you squeeze your shoulder blades together and slow the breath and try to relax anything anywhere in your body that's tense, you might notice stress dissipating. You might notice, you know, a pleasant sensation. You might notice pain. You might notice heat. So pay attention to those things that you notice. And through practicing that, you know, like anything in life, when you practice, you get better at it. You become more in tune with your body. And yes, you begin to hear your body speaking to you in a better way, in a more effective way. And so how many times have you ever, you know, had your body speak to you, speak to you, speak to you, and you ignore it, and then you find yourself in trouble, you know, and in the ER or whatever. So it's really important that we're in tune with our body and we hear the messages, the signals, the way it speaks to us. And yoga is really, really good at that, helping you to get better at that. Okay, so those are the three exercises that we went over yesterday for the back. So today for the shoulders, we're going to build upon that. The shoulders, um, I talked about how the back, we carry a lot of tension in our back. The neck and shoulders, probably one of the primary areas that we carry tension. And so, hi, Araminta. And so, um, if we carry a lot of stress and tension in our shoulders all day, every day, week by week, you know, month by month, you can imagine how that build, that we talked about that yesterday, that building of stress that takes our body into the, you know, that sympathetic nervous system, that fight or flight mode, where you're constantly in that mode, and then that puts a lot of stress on the adrenal system. Have you ever heard of adrenal fatigue? You know, um, you know when you're in a constant state of stress and you don't know how to manage your stress, then we can come into that adrenal fatigue where we're exhausted all the time and it affects, you know, all of our systems in the body and then you've got poor health. So, um... So neck and shoulders, really easy. Again, this is probably not anything that is new to you, but these are things you can do every day from your chair at work or wherever you're at. So the first exercise is simply shrugging the, sh oh. <laughs> shrugging the shoulders up, lift the chin a little bit, and just kind of let your head be cradled into your shoulders and then relax your shoulders down, okay? And so then you wanna add the breath. So you inhale, squeeze the shoulders up, Exhale, relax the shoulders down. And if you do this with me, I'm going to do it a couple more times. Really be present and be, let, your, let yourself just be aware of what you're experiencing. Do you feel that stress dissipating? Do you feel that tension being almost massaged out of your neck and shoulders? Because essentially what's happening is your shoulders are coming up into the neck and kind of massaging the area. You know, it's everything kind of working together. Um, so you want to do that about 10 times. That's exercise number one. Shoulders up, breathe in. Shoulders down. <sighs> breathe out and relax the shoulders. The second exercise is shoulder rolls. Really simple. But again, when you're doing these shoulder rolls, really slow down and try to go to, through a full range of motions. So shoulders up, shoulders back, shoulders down, shoulders up, shoulders back, shoulders down and really engage with what you are experiencing as you do that exercise. Another reason we, it's really important to really be present and engage with what you're experiencing during exercise is because you'll really be aware of how good it feels, which will motivate you to do it more often and more consistently. If your mind is over here and your body is over here, and you're really having this amazing experience that you're not really paying attention to, then tomorrow when it's time to do the exercises, you might be more you know, apt to skip that exercise because you didn't really engage and be present and experience the good sensations that you were having. So really be present, just be aware of everything that you're experiencing. And so then you wanna rotate or reverse and rotate your shoulders forward, go slow, go through as, the, as big a range of motion as is possible. Hey, Bob. <laughs> Glad to see you're joining me this morning. I'll see you a little bit later today. Um, so that's number two is shoulder rolls. And then number three is shoulder rolls again, but it's right arm, left arm. And so with right arm, left arm shoulder rolls, you're going to really feel that. If you do it with me, where are you feeling that? Not only shoulders, but in the back. 
you're pulling that those latissimus dorsi muscles forward and stretching that big muscle in the back and that feels really good too and then you reverse it and then you'll feel the chest opening up you'll feel yourself be able to take bigger breaths okay so really just be aware of what you're experiencing as you do these exercises all right, so those are my three exercises today that build upon the back exercises. All of these put together are starting to create your own little five minute exercise program. Um, I really wanna get back on here tomorrow. I don't know that I will be able to because I have a third part to this series where we're gonna talk about, we talked about the back and the shoulders and in the third part, probably we'll wait till Monday, I'll be focusing on the belly. And so um, thanks Araminta, love you. Um, and so, Really quick, let's talk about the belly before I go. Um, most of you, if you've ever gone to an exercise class, doesn't matter what it is, yoga, tai chi, aerobics, you've probably had an instructor tell you to stand up tall and to pull in those abdominal muscles and hold them tight. And um, I actually teach um, a practice and a theory that's the opposite of that. It's relaxing the abdominal muscles, letting that go, and because we actually carry a ton of stress in our abdominal wall. If you guys take do a little experiment for me today, ask yourself right now, what is what are my abs doing? Are they pulled in tight or are they relaxed? If you grew up in a time like I did, your abdomen is probably pulled in tight all the time and just constricted because you've been taught that you're getting a free little workout by always sucking in those abs. And by sucking in those abs, you have a flat you know, stomach and you know better posture. And so what I teach is the opposite of that, is releasing those abs because we carry so much tension. Test it out today. When you're standing at the sink and brushing your teeth, when you're washing dishes, when you're sitting in your car and you're driving, ask yourself, what are my abs doing right now? And usually they're contracted, tight, holding in all of that stress. And so that's another opportunity for us to release some tension and upregulate the parasympathetic nervous system. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in Monday's video. And again, um, just that example I, I talked about before, if I were to ask you to squeeze your muscle and hold it there all day, that muscle's gonna get really tired, but more importantly, have you guys heard of muscle memory? The ability of a muscle to remember something? Um, your muscles can lose their ability to remember how to relax if they're contracted all the time, okay? And so what, what's the big deal about that if our muscles lose the ability to know how to relax? because they're tense all the time and they're holding in that stress. Remember I talked about yesterday, stress and tension are held tightly within the muscles. And in order to release that, you've got to relax those muscles. Just like if I was holding something in my hand right here and I'm holding onto it tight, I can't let it go if I'm holding on tight. I've got to relax and release. Same thing with all the muscles throughout our body. It's when we relax those muscles that we release that tension. The body starts to send signals. The muscles are relaxed, the breath is slow, all is well. Now we can downregulate the sympathetic, upregulate the parasympathetic, and we can send the immune function and the digestive system into optimal um, um, effectiveness. I was thinking last night, and I wish my daughter was watching, and I wish my brother was watching, but I know they're not, um, about Star Trek. I'm not a huge Star Trek fan, but I've watched a lot of Star Trek because I grew up with a brother and a daughter. My daughter loves it, my brother loves it. Um, what would Captain Kirk do when they were under fire? He would say, Scotty, divert all power to the shields. And that's exactly what happens when we're in the fight or flight mode. It's exactly what happens when there's a ton of stress in our life. We divert all our power to emergency functions like, hi Brooke, like the adrenal system. And so when that sympathetic nervous system is in full throttle all day, every day, then your immune function, you know, the power is being diverted away from that and away from digestion to these other life-saving, you know, mechanisms. So we, we have control over this. We can, at any time, right now, I can relax my muscles, I can slow the breath. So I'm gonna move on. I hope that you uh, try these exercises today. I hope you find them beneficial. Um, if you have any questions and you're watching this later on the replay, you can post those below. And um, just like yesterday, I wanna offer my free um, invitation to my class, which is called Quasi Yoga with Pam Fox. It meets on Tuesdays and Thursdays at the Ocean Park uh, Retreat Center. Hey, Erin. And um, at 1.30, and the first class is free. So just come on down, check it out, see what we're about. You can also find more information about that on my um, Facebook page, Quasi Yoga with Pam Fox. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.